The man rolls his sleeves back down and casually wipes some blood from his cheek. He nods at you, the shadow of a smile on his lips. Good work there. Good work. I can tell you've got chops. He stretches out one rough hand to shake yours. He grips your hand tight as a vice and shakes it. Hard. Good to meet you, lad. Say, you don't look all that busy. I could use someone to watch my back. And it looks like you could use someone to watch yours. I've just got a small errand to run. And then I'll be looking to get the hell out of here while I've still got a neck to collar. How about we stick together? until we get out of this place. He shrugs, looking off to the side. Mercenaries. It's a job. My job. Everyone needs to make a living. I make mine running errands. The little black cat trailing you hisses at him, hair raising a ridge along its back. Without batting an eyelid, the man rumbles a lupine growl. The cat hides behind your leg, mewling. He shoots you a flinty look, all teeth and peril. Lone wolves only share such information with friends. Are we going to be friends? He grins, sharp teeth glittering in the midday sun. So, before we hit the road, it's best if we decide battle strategies up front. Should keep more of our blood in. Survival's my main priority. I'll use every trick in the book to keep us alive. But if a wayfarer's not what you're after, I've got other skills. What do you need? Dexterous arts. What are you looking for exactly? A tapestry embroiderer? Can do. Onwards. He scans the horizon for threats with one green eye, then nods back at you. Looks like you've got quite a busy little crew already. My instincts tell me to travel with a smaller pack. But if you happen to lose one, you know where I am. Hey. Hi. Are you certain you want to dismiss your companion? Oh, really now? Well, if Anne curls his lip in greeting, a knowing smile on his face. So, seen all the magnificent sights of Fort Joy already? I've just got a small errand to run here, but then I'll be looking to get the hell out. Everyone needs to make a living. The little black cat trailing you hisses at him. Here, he shoots you. Lone wolf. He grins. Right, you are.
Unless you maniac. Amidst a crowd of screws, bolts, and uh, what you after? The woman looks up as you approach.
What do you need? Who in their right mind would think of a thing like this? Bad luck to let one of them cross your path. Leave me. <coughs> Go. You leave me be. Just <coughs> leave. The Magister stares at the ground, unaware of your presence. With a start, she looks up and realizes someone is standing right beside her. Her eyes meet yours. She doesn't blink. The Divine is dead. The Bishop is all we have left. Really? It's all I can think about. Us. Alone, no guidance, no protection, and the Void Woken, there's more by the day. Her voice trails to silence, and she resumes staring at the ground, lost. I do wish Alexander would ascend sooner rather than later. They say his powers are not developing as they should. They blame the Void Woken. But we need his powers to develop so that he may banish the Void Woken. It's quite the pickle. I wish it every night. More than anything. Hmm? Oh, yes. Only a week or two before, well, you know. I wanted to serve him more than anything. But who didn't then? He was driving the Black Ring back, soon to rout them entirely. I put my faith in the bishop. Reminds me of his father. And what he said has been true. Wherever there are sorcerers, Void Woken strike. Go on, keep moving. As you approach the unsmiling Magister, Ifan catches your arm and speaks to you with some urgency. I need to talk to this one for a few moments. Alone. Ifan strides up to the Magister, speaking in a calm and controlled voice. Though you can't hear what he whispers, the Magister's face turns whiter than snow as he hands a note to Ifan with shaking hands. D -d -d oh, I'll give you the information. Here, just, just, d don't. All right. Ifan walks back to you leaving the quivering wreck of a Magister behind. When he catches your eye, he winks. If Anne catches you looking over at him, he raises his eyebrows. What? He barks a laugh, then shakes his head sheepishly. I wanted some information. That Magister wanted to negotiate. I negotiated.
Oh, it's just practice. All in the way you set your jaw, lad. I'll teach you someday. <laughs> I only do it when it's necessary. And it was necessary back there. He wanted me to kill someone. I didn't want to kill them. Being a little impolite seemed the least bad option. That's about the size of it for me, all right. And now that we agree, shall we agree to keep moving? After reading the scrap of paper he took from the Magister, Ifan marks a spot on your map and looks out to the far horizon. She groans in pain, refusing... Everything there? It's good. A delivery. Surely you'll have one. Hey, you're a little light in your pack, ain't you, mate? Who could blame you with the garbage they got for sale round here? fit for beasts. Ain't fit for beasts.
Why don't you take a gander at the goodies I got? Stuff you won't find anywhere else in camp. Procured by special means. Let's just say folks leave here, but they don't seem to take their effects. Maybe I happen to know where everything ends up. Only the finest, you know. Worse than war rations, these. Perhaps if those bleeding dwarves didn't eat so much. fit for beasts. Here's the goods. Like you wanted. Got it. Griff is slowly, methodically peeling the skin from a potato. As you approach, he looks up, setting the potato, but not the sharp little knife down. What? Why don't you take a gander at the goodies I got? 
stuff you won't find anywhere else in camp. Hey, oh, nice dry, Midge. Now, uh, put that shiner away and I'll shave a little off the top, how about? Still on your feet, eh? Glad to hear it. Feel free to take a gander at the stalk, if you're so inclined. Nice and sweet. Heading into the kitchen. Don't try anything funny around Griff. I'm watching you. Perhaps if those bleeding dwarfs did meet so much. Well, he runs this place and everyone in it, including you. Better to make yourself useful to him if you're stuck here anyway. I know that look well enough. You're about to pop, ain't ya? Why don't you enter a match and let some of that frustration out? The right way. Winning has its own rewards, if that's what you're after. Slip down the hatch and talk to Thorn. Put those greasy hands of yours to work. You're scared, are ya? Worse than war matches, please. I've got that special shipment you was asking after. Everything now? Good. Leave him be. Don't make me say it again. Listen, I can help you if you just... Shut up, elf. This clown... Caught him stealing from my kitchen. <clears throat> Still won't say where he stashed my supplies. Sound like someone you'd let off with a slap on the wrist. Caught him red-handed trying to make off with a second crate after he took the first. <clears throat> Went down like a rent boy when we grabbed him. Easy. Supplies. A crate of food. A citrus in particular. <clears throat> he'll talk or he'll die quiet. All's I want is my supplies. <clears throat> Happy to let this clown die in a gutter instead of my kitchen. Bring back my crate and you got yourself a deal. An elf, caked in mud and blood, looks up at you from the bottom of the cage. He holds his shoulder at a strange angle. Despite his condition, he appears eager for your attention. You... You believe what he says, but I am a thief. Perceptive. Like most men behind bars, I'm innocent. Like most of us here on the island, in fact. Aren't you like me, looking for a way out? I do. I prepare it myself. One only has to follow the path. But you guess I need something too. I know a way out. I show you. And you? You help me out of here. I cannot die in this cage. Trust is all we have here. I do not counterfeit. 
I have honor. Finally, progress. Griff releases me if he sees I do not have what he misses. We, you, must find who steals them. After I am free, you are free. I see no one. In fact, I only hear the sound of Griff clearing his throat. You know how he does? <clears throat> like so. For some time, I think Griff takes his own supplies. But I see the anger in him that he does not find it. He truly does not find what he seeks. Griff is a powerful man. Power is mysterious, in case you haven't <clears throat> noticed. I intend no harm. I want only some provisions. A bit of bread, a potato or two. Nothing Griff should be loath to give. I need to escape, and, and I have people to consider. You understand. Thank you. And hurry. Please. Don't tell anyone where you got this, eh? Griff glances from his blade to you and back again. You already know the terms. Nothing else to say. Sure, have a look. Perhaps if those bleeding dwarves did meet so much, 